Hello everybody, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'm glad you're here today. We're going to do a watercolor painting and it's going to be on Fabriano Artistico 300 pound cold press uh, watercolor paper and its size is 11 by 14. Uh, we're working with big brushes today and I'm going to try to stick with the big brushes as much as possible and uh, maybe use a script liner for a few things but uh, We'll uh, probably do a couple paintings because with this uh, size paper uh, and big brushes, it should go fairly quickly. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm going to kind of try to paint this uh, in the style of Sterling Edwards. You've heard me talk about him before. You know I have his brushes. I have his palette. Um, I even have the same set of paints that he uses in his workshops. Um, so I thought we would try that today and see how it goes. We don't have a sketch. We don't have a photograph. Uh, we're going to kind of make this up as we go from things I've seen and uh, other paintings. I'm going to try to kind of copy that style as much as I can remember it. Um, so that's uh, where we're going with that. Um, and I'm not going to go to the computer today because I really don't have any photographs to show you that aren't copyright protected. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to, uh, I've looked at a few photos. As you can look at a few photos, you can Google uh, Sterling Edwards. You can look up some of his photos, go to his website and see the kind of paintings he does. Um, I really like his watercolors and some of them are really kind of really neat um, and I like the way he uses the big brushes so I'm going to try to uh, use that style today so without any more talking about it let's get going I'm going to go through the brushes and the paints and I will get painting okay so here are the the palette this is the Sterling Edwards big brush palette it's called it's called a big brush palette because he has these two inch brushes and he has these uh, wells that are made to hold a two inch brush both the paints and the extra wells so I don't know if I'll use this brush today but I have his bristle brushes he has a set of bristle brushes uh, large medium and small the large one is two inches um, so uh, we may use that I probably won't because I'm really painting on a smaller paper than uh, he typically paints on so I'll probably be using my uh, medium and small and then I have a one inch flat and a half inch flat that uh, probably be using that one inch for sure the half inch maybe not as I said before I may not use this large one this is a nylon br brush that's got really soft bristles um, as opposed to the um, bristle brush here that's really got tight bristles and they're very short um, and then I may have a script liner so that's pretty much all I want to talk about the brushes. <clears throat> Let me go around and tell you about the paints one more time. Uh, you may have may remember this from previous uh, episodes, but uh, here we have these are Holbein uh, transparent watercolors. And here we have Payne's Gray. Here we have Cobalt Blue, Ultra Marine Deep Blue. We have Permanent Violet, Green Gray, Oop, Green Gray here. This is now umber. I, I had a burnt umber in here and it was too red. And I realized I was using the wrong palette color, so I've swapped it out for just the Holbein uh, color called umber. And then I have burnt sienna, which is where we get the reddish brown. Quinacridone scarlet. Bright rose. Brilliant orange. Quinacridone gold. We have yellow deep, permanent yellow deep and cad yellow lemon so that's the paints um, and uh, I don't know how many of those we'll use today either but uh, that's what we have to work with so now let's go up here to the uh, I'm going to get the, uh, the, the paper uh, zoomed in here and get it set up so that you can see what we're doing get it like about like this and move it over slightly like that let's put the palette back on and there we got it there. Now I also notice in my using my palette that I can actually move this over and give myself more room here uh, for my overhead camera. And so I'm going to try to do that so we can have a little more space here. I, it's still going not going to work perfectly, I guess, because of the, the camera feed. Anyway, that's the what we're going to work with today. <clears throat> All right. So what are we going to paint? Well. Um, I got this idea for a snow scene. It's winter in most of the country, except in Florida, and it's it's winter here, but uh, it's still going to be 75 degrees today where I live. Um, so we're going to do a little winter scene. We're going to have some maybe mountains in the background. I'm just going to sketch in a very light uh, uh, indication of some mountains back here. Uh, we're going to have some some trees in the distance, 
few trees. My, my horizon is going to be high, maybe about right here. So um, I don't want to have uh, the horizon right in the middle. I don't want to have it below them. can have it below the middle or above the middle. I just don't want to have it right in the middle. And then we'll have some background trees here. And then we're going to have some, some middle ground trees in this area. And, and uh, we'll make these fill out this space. Then we're going to put in some other ones that maybe have fallen in this area, put in some snow, put in some uh, banks of snow, and then maybe some other grasses and stuff in the foreground. So that's it. Um, there's not much to it. Um, so we're going to start with this, uh, this, this uh, medium-sized brush here. It's, uh, I think, an inch and a half. Um, and so we're going to just cover the whole paper with water. I actually have two sheets of paper here, one on top of the other. Um, so if we get done with this and uh, you're not bored, we will uh, try to uh, do a second painting because I think these are going to go fairly fast. But I just want to show you what you can do with these big brushes, with these uh, bristle brushes, and uh, how well they work uh, for getting some really neat uh, watercolor effects. Most watercolor artists don't use bristle brushes. You don't have to have these brand of bristle brushes. You don't have to have uh, uh, this in your arsenal, but if you want to use a bristle brush, grab an old uh, oil painting brush. Grab a, a something, a, a bristle that you would use for uh, maybe acrylics, even if you paint acrylics. Um, so, um, <clears throat> hi guys. Uh, uh, by the way, I have a computer up here with a chat window, so if you want to talk to me, uh, type something in the chat window, ask me a question, and uh, I'll see if I can answer it. I'm trying to get this paper good and wet. Hello to Big Blues Guy. Good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I want to get this as wet as I can, and it's pretty wet right now. It's got a nice sheen on it. Um, when I paint vertically like this, you may paint uh, horizontally, and it may... Uh, the, the water may not run. My, my water runs down here very quickly and starts pooling in the bottom of the paper. Um, so I, my paper will dry out up here at the top much faster than yours might. Um, but I have to do this because of my video camera situation here. And uh, <clears throat> so that's the, that is the uh, wetting. So I'm gonna make myself now um, take some of this uh, cobalt blue and uh, we're going to make a graded wash. One of the things you can do with these large bristle brushes, they hold a lot of paint, they hold a lot of water. You get some paint in there <clears throat> and you can really make a nice graded wash. I'm going to try to make one almost all the way down to the uh, horizon line here. I'm going to just start by going here and just starting to go like this. You see mine's running down. You see how nice how that, how that, uh, the way that works with this paint and these big brushes. I hold a lot of paint, but as you come down, more paint comes out of the brush and you gradually get this nice graded wash effect. It's not a perfect wash. It's got some nice light lines in there that kind of look like clouds. Um, I'm going to leave those. I'm not going to mess with them. Um, so I'm going to take my brush and get a little, <clears throat> maybe a little bit of this uh, quinacridone scarlet here. It's a red with with a little uh, blue in it. And I'm going to mix it slightly with my blue that I had to get sort of a lavender color. I'm going to come back and just touch this area here right at the horizon line. And let that run and it, it will all blend together and make a nice, nice horizon line. <clears throat> I'm sorry with my voice, folks. I've been having trouble with sinuses and sinus congestion for a long time, and it's still with me. So I probably cough and make noises that I don't want to make, but I, it's almost involuntary. Um, I'm going to take this brush and try to pick this up right here at the bottom to kind of dry that line out. I don't want it to move too far down the paper. Okay, <clears throat> so we have a nice little beautiful horizon line there. I can always take some uh, paper towel and, and blot it, and that will stop this uh, water from running down further on your paper if you want to stop it. I wet the whole paper to start with, which causes that to happen, but uh, you can kind of stop it if you uh, 
can dry the paper because it will tend to stop when the paper gets dry and it will tend to, to make a pool. <clears throat> Lindy, did I say hello to you? Thank you for joining from South Africa. Glad to have you here. We're doing big brush blank paper today. Had no sketch, no, uh, no photograph to work from and we're just putting this big sky in right now. So I'm going to put some mountains in the background. They're going to have a little bit of a uh, purplish cast because they're further back. We do that. Why? We're showing atmospheric perspective, right? As things get back in the distance, they get bluer, usually get a little more uh, violet. So let's put a few of those in and uh, see how that works. I'm still using this one and a half inch brush. I haven't done anything else with it. And when I put this in, because this is wet, it's going to it's going to uh, blossom if I'm not careful. So the thing you want to do is to get paint in your palette that is not as runny as the paint that's on the on the paper. One way to tell if you're how thick your paint is is if you can run your finger through it on the palette like that, and it leaves a line. That means that's that's paint is drier, and it's the kind of paint you want to use when you're going over wet paint, paper, wet paper. So I've got this pa paint in this brush, a lot of it, and it's drier than what's on the paper here, I hope. It's still going to bleed, but as I put it in, it's going to run down and bleed up slightly, which is okay with me. So I'm just going to try to put this in very carefully with this big brush, and Put in a couple layers of mountains back there that are sort of not too steep, um, but I want to have some movement in. I'm going to change the color a little bit, put a little more blue in it as we move over this way. Okay, and as I touch them, touch the bottom with some more paint, it will start making darker marks here. I can put some marks in it that look like we've got some something going on in these mountains besides just two-dimensional stuff. We're trying to give it a three-dimensional. Okay, so there we go. That's a nice range of mountains back there in the distance. Um, and it's still very wet because every time I touch it with some more paint you notice uh, even with the thicker paint, it's not making a blossom because my paint coming out of the brush is thicker and drier than the paint that's on the paper, so it's going to make a mark, but it's not going to leave a big blossom. If I got a lot of water in this brush and put it on there, you'd have this big cauliflower blossom, they call them sometimes, uh, building up back there. I don't want that. So let's see here, I can maybe make just a little at the bottom here to give us a little bit of tension there. Okay, so try to keep some movement going in here. Okay, I think let me stop with that. Let it set for a while. One thing when you load this 800 or this 300 pound paper up with water, it holds it for a long time. Um, so. That's that. Okay, so what are we going to put in front of it? I don't know. Let's put some trees in front of it. Let's put some uh, evergreens back there. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of my gray-green color here. And uh, that's sort of a <clears throat> earthy looking green color when it comes out of the tube. And you can redden it up or you can lighten it up by putting yellow in it. You can, you can uh, brown it down by putting a little of the burnt umber in it. Uh, a little bit different color. You can change the color by putting a little bit of the uh, this purple in here that we've got. So I'm going to, I still want to now make sure this paint is thicker than the, the uh, what's on the what's on the paper already. And I want to make sure that what I'm mixing down here, it's a nice brownish purplish color. I'm going to test it with my finger to see if it's dry enough. And I do that by doing this. Okay, you see the mark of my finger left in the palette. That means that paint is fairly dry, fairly thick, 
and it's not going to go crazy on me and make a blossom. And plus this is drying out up here. So let's come in and see what we can put in in terms of some background trees here. I'm just using the side of this brush. This brush has a thousand br bristles in it. I didn't count them, but it's somewhere close. Um, so I'm going to just put in this little bit of these trees back here. And since this is a snow scene, I want it to be fairly cool. Uh, and I want it to be, uh, I, want, I want to have you able to go back in into it with your eye and be able to get to the background. So these trees are uh, some sort of a evergreen back there. And let's just put a few more in here. Something like that. So it's just a stand of trees sitting back there in the, in the background. Um, actually, it's closer to the middle ground. Tickle the bottom here very lightly with this brush. You can see how nice it just pulls up things that look like grasses back there. Okay, so that's my first little stand of trees. You can see some blue back there that looks like it might be snow. Actually, this foreground is not going to stay white, even though it's snow. We're going to make it sort of bluish um, because the snow, when it gets any kind of a shadow on it, um, turns bluish. So we're going to do that as well. So let's see here if I can put a few more over here on the other side. Maybe I'll put a little more green in these on the right side. <clears throat> Maybe bring them a little more forward, possibly. But I still want that paint to be very thick. So over here, I keep looking up to look at my photograph. I don't have a photograph. So that's uh, it's making me think. It's almost like doing a doing an abstract. And these places where I'm putting these trees here can be, they can almost be any color here in the middle, uh, and any size or whatever, because what tells the viewer what's going on with these is what's at the top. This, this top tells you but that's some sort of a uh, evergreen tree sitting out there. Spread it out a little bit, put a few of them up a little taller. Um, maybe I'll put a little blue in it to kind of darken it down in some areas at the bottom here. Um, didn't get enough blue in it. <clears throat> okay, so we're changing the color, changing the tone. Uh, still trying to keep a uh, a base on this that sort of looks like it's in a flat field so that it's not uh, uh, hilly right now. Okay, those two stand of trees look a lot similar. So I didn't really get enough change in color in this one on the right. So let's see if we can put just a few more blues in here. Darken it down a little bit. So I'm putting another layer of blue, cyan blue, on top of this brown. And it's making very another layer. It's actually coming on with another layer. You can see the dark showing up. Um, And that's, that's really kind of neat. And I could play with this for a long time. Um, but I just want to try to get this in as much as possible. And I'm going to leave it kind of like that. It's kind of a rough bottom. Looks like it could have some snow going up in there. Um, this area over here has uh, got a nice, um, looks pretty nice to me. So let's just leave it like that for now. Actually, as soon as I said that, I've got a change of idea. I'm going to make a couple of these trees 
kind of go up above the mountains to show they're a little closer maybe. What do you think? Something like that. This brush makes great evergreen trees. And I'm just laying it on the side and just letting whatever bristles touch the paper pull off the paint. <clears throat> Beautiful little stand of trees. Okay, so let's clean that brush out. <clears throat> now, we've got paper down here that's really pretty dry. <clears throat> and it's kind of dried out as we've been messing around up there in the up upper area. So, um, I think I'm going to put something down here. I just realized I didn't really put any more color in here. So I'm going to take a little bit of my cyan blue, get it kind of wet because this paper now is dry here. A little bit of this uh, oh, scarlet, uh, quin quinacridone scarlet. And see if I can kind of match this color here. I'm a little bluer than that color. Uh, that's okay. Need more water. I'm going to get make this like a graded. See, I've got <clears throat> got that. Now I'm going to just sort of pull it and let it fade out over here like that. So I'm, I'm just giving a very, very light tone to this paper here. Very light. It's almost almost no paint in the brush. It's almost clear water. But it's pulling down just enough that you can see marks in the snow. It's not paper. When it's going to dry a lot lighter than, than it um, it goes on, of course, um, but I want to leave that like a little little mound there. You can kind of walk around and get behind these trees. Just a few little marks here. Okay, I like the way that looks right now. Over here, we could probably just merge a few into the snow bank here. Don't know where the light's coming from. I haven't even thought about that, but I'm going to assume it's kind of coming from my right so that any shadows may fall to the left here. And yeah, let's darken this down just a little. Okay. All right. So does that look like snow? What do you think? Gaurav Sharma, welcome. <laughs> it's really late in India. Oh, boy. I guess so. Is that 11.30? 11, almost midnight. 23.52. Yeah, that's, that is almost midnight. Well, thanks for staying up and uh, watching. Appreciate it. All right, here we go. Um, so now we've got a pretty good background of this thing. What are we going to do in, the, in the, some more middle ground and some maybe uh, foreground trees? <clears throat> and we're going to put in some grasses that kind of look like they belong here. Um, I'm going to use some of this junk I got in the palette, uh, this bluish brownish color. And now this is wet, so I have to be careful. Um, but I want to flick in a few things that look like they're grasses or something in here. This brush just lets you do that so perfectly. I'm trying to get this sort of an S shape going here in, in the light areas. So as I put some more trees in here, you'll be able to walk back into the painting, which is really what I'm trying to do with this sort of S shape. The other thing I didn't show you, there's a, uh, <clears throat> a way to keep these, uh, these edges soft. Right now they're all kind of hard edge. But you can use this other brush, or you can just use a bristle brush that you have. One of your, uh, if you don't have this, this brand of brush, you can use any kind of a bristle brush. Get it wet with clear water, make sure there's no paint in it. Dry it out. And then you can come along here and you can just soften some edges right along here. 
and let this give a nice soft look to that. And it looks like it's going into the snow. And the snow's kind of going into that. Um, we've got some other areas we might want some soft edges here, maybe up in this area here. So I'm just going to tickle it, put, let the paint move around a little bit with its bristles. And as long as the water in the brush is drier than the water on the paint, you'll get this nice soft edge movement. Otherwise, you'll get a big blossom and you'll say, what did I, why did I let you talk me into that? Okay, the other thing is, is that if you want to look like, make the, the uh, snow look like it's kind of going over a hill, you kind of want to have a hard edge at the top, but you want to have soft edges at the bottom. So it kind of really blends it out and, and lets it look like that. Okay, so we're going to have some trees in here that kind of overlap the trees in the background once those get dry. We're going to have some more trees and a few more shrubs and uh, things here, but that brush is meant to uh, <clears throat> basically give you soft edges. So far I've only used these two brushes. Uh, I'm going to get out my flat here while this paper is still a little bit wet. I'm going to come back in and see if we can put in a few square off a few of these edges here. They're a little bit too ragged. Um, so let's get a little bit of that in the palette. Get some of this purple going here. Mix it with a little bit of this, this blue we've got and just see if we can straighten up a couple edges here. Maybe down here the same way. Um, If I add another layer of dark, you'll be able to see some dimension in these, in this uh, row here. Um, so now I've got this here. If I want, I want to put something over here on this side so that your eye kind of travels in an S pattern going up up the page here. So I'm going to have another row here. Um, there's a, a neat technique that I was going to show you. Okay, I'm going to take some more of this cyan blue and we're going to kind of put in a, uh, this is dry enough here. So we're going to put in a, a bank here like that. And I want it hard on the top or a hard edge on the top and I want it soft on the bottom. So I'm going to get my one inch brush here that's got some clear water in it. Clear water, dry it out. On the bottom of this we're going to just come along and do this. All of a sudden you see a, a nice little hill, a little mound of snow. And that hard edge tells you it's kind of going over a hill like that. Okay. And maybe we'll have another little one over here somewhere to uh, kind of keep you in the painting. Like that. Take our little brush and soften it up here. Okay. We're making really good time on this thing, I think. Um, so now these these trees here in the foreground, I'm going to change them and make them uh, maybe some uh, some of these trees that uh, have a wide, well, like a deciduous tree that maybe is all uh, lost all its leaves. <clears throat> so over here on the right side, instead of uh, making more evergreens, I can come back and put an evergreen or two in there if I want. But I'm going to get some paint that's drier than what's on the paper. Now the paper's pretty dry. I should have, could have taken the time to dry it with my hair dryer, but I decided I'm going to just keep going with this thing. We're going to put in some trees that kind of touch the bottom of this and kind of go up into the, uh, like this. Okay, 
and some maybe some come off like this all right um, got a couple different sizes of trees this is a sort of a medium size I would say give me a fat one here I remember one of my workshop instructors Tony Couch used to say do them in threes make a mama bear papa bear baby bear so you want one that's kind of big and fat and put a little Payne's gray in there get a little darker than that I'm gonna make it go over this dark background here so I want it to be so that you can see it much better so let's just go on up here and put in this other bigger tree and I think you can see that okay so that's my biggest tree right there and we'll throw in a few little baby bears here maybe a few little things that go up like this something like that very little something going on here take these right off the top of the page if we can okay um, this one probably needs a little more dark in here because it's covering going over that background it's fairly dark all right <clears throat> now let's go back and get our big brush so I've all used this big brush for almost everything except for what I'm doing right now which was putting those trees in I'm going to come back and put in a few more grasses and that sort of thing in here. Like that. Let's get some more grasses. And we'll put a few in here. Okay, let's get that really dark here in the foreground if we can. Put some Payne's Gray in that. Just throw some little spots in there that look like there might be some rocks or something sticking up. And uh, same over here. Let's put some of that heavy dark grasses over there. All right, um, so now I can think of walking into here and out and back, um, get to the background. I want to take the eye and kind of move the eye from <clears throat> point to point, which is what a lot of artists really are good at. Uh, I'm trying to get good at it, but um, like everybody else, you kind of you paint to learn how to paint, right? <clears throat> okay. Um, I said I was going to put a few trees in here, and I didn't do that yet. So let's quickly do some of those. Um, I'll use my little uh, number four round here, and uh, we'll just throw in a few, a couple of trees here that kind of connect with this. Now, that's not very dark paint, is it? Get some more stuff going here. Here we go. And uh, a big old knot in that one. Something like that. Maybe a couple more little ones that kind of go along with him here. Don't have to do a whole lot more. This is probably a pretty well close to complete painting right now. Um, a few 
few things there. Um, thing I was going to try to show you if I can. I don't know if I can make that work with a, putting a little dimple around this thing to make it looks like it's kind of buried in the snow. Um, way to put a little blue around this to give these a little bit of a, a hole like they're sitting in almost. Um, take your uh, bristle brush and sort of soften this edge and it looks kind of like they're in an indentation a little bit there. <clears throat> um, what else do I need to do to this? I don't think I need to do a whole lot more. Uh, I do think I need to throw a little splatter on here. Maybe I'm going to put a few, before I put some splatter on, I think I'll come up here and put a few uh, things that look like they're uh, Maybe some leftover leaves or something hanging around here to give us some, uh, look like these are real trees that had something hanging on them at one point. And I'm just sort of touching in different areas, no pattern or anything, just leaving a few things hanging around here. Put a few dots around the bottom here that looks like might be some leaves that have fallen. Uh, something like that. Um, <clears throat> even over here you might have a few little globs of stuff that uh, have gotten in the snow. The snow looks almost too pristine. It should be, should have some stuff messing it up a little bit. So let's mess it up. Let's put a little splatter in there. Get myself a bunch of this paint that's in the palette and uh, get a lot of water on the brush and this really loosens the painting up. It starts giving it some nice textures that you didn't have before. And uh, this side I'll make this just a little bit darker right here. So I'll keep playing with this and I need somebody to tell me to stop. So I'm going to tell myself to stop here and uh, just leave it like that. And uh, that would make a very nice little Christmas card if you were to put that on a 5 by 7 <clears throat> piece of watercolor paper and put it in an envelope and mail it to one of your loved ones or friends. Um, so thing I didn't do was sign it. Better do that, huh? Yeah, let's do that. Give me some blue in here. Get the big this rigger brush out. Because I got another paper behind this, so we got time. I'm going to do another one. And uh, get more stuff in it than that. Okay. There we go. Check and make sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's all I need to do there. Oh, Lindy reminded me last time I did an oil painting to put a couple birds in the sky. So let's put a couple of a couple of high flyers up here. Something like that. And they don't need to be very big. They shouldn't be very big, actually. They should be very, very small, because even, even an eagle at that distance is going to have a, uh, could be very small looking. All right. Um, that is completed. So let me clean my palette out. more twigs popping up next to the three bears. Okay, that's probably a good idea. Kind of, I did put a few in there, but a few more won't hurt. Because that's where they kind of all grow. They kind of grow in this area here and there, and then maybe even a few more over here. You can keep messing with this for a long time and trying to uh, make it look better, make it look more realistic, but something like that would just make a Beautiful little uh, Christmas card to somebody, or a Thanksgiving card, or whatever. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So much for that. Um, I got another um, container of clear water here, of clean water. Clean my palette. Now rip this paper off of the uh, 
easel and we'll get set up. I'm going to swap the water here, dirty water for clean water. So I've got really two things of clean water here. I always keep one totally clean. I keep the other one to uh, wash out the brushes with. So uh, the dirty water, I can continue to clean it, keep it uh, separate. Okay, so I'm going to take a little coffee break for a couple minutes. I'm going to just take this off of the paper here, take this paper off. When you take the tape off of this paper, make sure you pull up. If you can see, I'm pulling up. Pulling up and away. If you pull down, you'll pull into the paper and you'll likely tear the paper and you'll have a big scar across there that you won't like. So just try to uh, take it off and this way you pull away, right? Probably don't have to tell most of you that if you've ever, once you do it once and tear your paper and make a big scar across it, you will uh, probably won't do that again. All right, let's take this last strip off. Same way, pull it away. All right, there we go. So there's our first painting. All right. Now, I have nothing on this paper again. I am basically have a blank sheet. I'm going to get myself a good drink of water here, so I'm going to turn my microphone off for a minute. Okay, I'm back. My throat gets kind of dry. <clears throat> so, I thought maybe we might do a uh, kind of a swampy scene. Same idea, but we're going to put water in it instead of snow. Snow is water, just frozen. Um, <clears throat> but we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come back and start here with a uh, little rough sketch. Uh, it's not going to have a mountain in it. It's just going to have some uh, my, my uh, horizon line let me put the horizon line down lower, like maybe down right in here somewhere. Have a small foreground, but we'll have a lot of stuff going on. We'll have a lot of tree, tree type things going on here. And uh, we'll have some over, some in the water over here. So we'll have that. We'll maybe have a bank of small trees going across back here to kind of show the back of the water line back there. So we're looking at a lake <clears throat> and uh, we can put these kind of trees that we have here in Florida. We have these cypress trees that uh, might try to make a few of those for you and show you those. Um, but that's all to the sketch. That's all there is for the sketch. It's not much. So we're going to go with a clean brush again. And get myself another some paper towel here. All right, so now we're going to wet this paper down. Same, same idea. A lot of water, heavy bristle brush, the uh, inch and a half bristle brush. So we've been going about 40 minutes, I think, or something like that. Um, so take out the time I talked in the beginning, we probably spent a little over 35 minutes on that first painting. So uh, when you use big brushes, you can move fairly fast and you can get a lot done in a hurry. Okay, so now we've got this paper that is nice and wet, shiny. And I'm gonna try one of the things we have We've been looking at here a lot are uh, some very nice sunsets. So we're going to put a sunset with some of this yellow. Uh, it's, it's called uh, permanent permanent yellow deep. So it's a blue. It's a yellow that's got some uh, red in it. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to start at the top and bring that down, and we're going to put some red that's got some uh, orange in it at the bottom. So let's just take a couple of very quick, easy strokes across here like this. Again, I'm making a graded wash because the paint is coming out of the brush. 
right down to the horizon line, okay? And you can see now it's darker at the top, slightly lighter at the bottom of that wash. And that's what a that's the definition of a graded wash. It's darker at the top. Doesn't have to be darker at the top, but it just has to be darker in one section and lighter in the other. So if I stay out of there, if I'm, if I'm strong enough, have a strong enough will to stay away from it, um, that will work pretty well. I don't want to put much more in there. I want to darken it maybe just a little at the top. Something like that. As soon as I say stay out of it, I go back in it. How about that? All right, so now I want to get just a little of this red, red that's got some orange in it. This is called <clears throat> uh, Brilliant Orange. It's more orange than red, actually. Um, but I can add a little red to it if I want and uh, make it just a little redder. And I'm going to come down at the bottom now where I've got this. Make sure I, this paint is a little thicker. I want it to be thicker because I don't want to blossom going into whatever I got on there. I don't know if it's quite got it thick enough yet. Looks kind of... I think if I run my finger through it, it's going to run back together. Yeah, it's a little bit too wet. So let's put a little more paint in it. <clears throat> Get a little more paint here. And see this. Now that's still pretty wet. Take some water out of my brush and see if that helps here. So much is so much is so it's so important to make sure you know how much water is in your brush, how much is on the paper. Um, so I'm just going to come across here and make a very light across, across there. Might even leave a, something that looks like a little sunlight going there. I don't know. Because that's wet, that's all going to mingle together. <clears throat> I don't have to do too much with it. Okay. Well, this is going to be a sunset, Lindy, over sort of a uh, maybe a swampy like lake or a swampy scene. It's not going to be, uh, it's going to have some good reflection in it because I'm going to force that to happen. But let's put this. Again, I'm doing kind of the same thing I did on the sky on that last one where um, I've got this down to the horizon line. I'll take that back. You know what? I said the horizon line was going to be down here, didn't I? However, that's going to be water in here. <clears throat> so let's think about that. I think I'm going to keep have the horizon line up here and I'm going to make all of this water and it will come down and into the foreground. That way we can get these very nice reflective colors. Um, see what happens if I start putting a few things in this water. I'm using this Brilliant orange and a little bit of this red, uh, bright rose it's called, uh, to kind of get this color in the brush. So I'm making these strokes vertically. some yellow down here. This paper's drying out already. I can see the uh, getting some rough texture here so that it's starting to dry out. So let's start here at the base and let's pull up now on this. <laughs> okay. I'm kind of experimenting here. I don't have anything to go from, go, go with. I'm just kind of filling it in. 
So we can make this the back of the lake back here. We can put some uh, bank in back there and let it run down with these reflections toward the, this foreground. And then we can start maybe making it a little bit darker down here in the foreground. We start maybe adding a little bit of our brown into this yellow. Um, I get some paint. And let's see if we can change it as we come down a little more here. <clears throat> it's not getting very brownish. I'm going to have the whole paper covered here with uh, these vertical reflection streaks. And you know, if this doesn't work out, no big deal. We, all we've done is spend a little time practicing and throw away a sheet of paper. Okay, so now I want to try to make sure this is blended together. So I'm going to get my big brush, clean it out, and just see if I can sort of soften a little bit of this as we go across. These horizontal strokes will give me a little bit of that reflective quality that you typically want in your water. <clears throat> Probably hard for you to see that, but that's, uh, that's what I'm trying to do there. I do have some streaks going across. This bristle brush just kind of picks them up and moves them around. All right. <laughs> yeah, that yellow, Lindy, is a Beautiful color, Permanent Yellow Deep by Holbein. I mix that with that uh, quinacridone gold, and it's got some really beautiful colors in it. All right, so <clears throat> now this is all water back here, and we're going to be coming forward with some, some trees, uh, a bank of trees, maybe going across the back of the water back here. So what's that going to look like? Well, I don't know. You tell me. I'm going to get some green. I'm going to get some blue, cyan blue. Mix it with my gray green here. And I'm going to make those trees in the background to be very kind of dark. Anything that is vertical in a landscape, usually they're darker at the bottom. Any kind of tree that you paint in a landscape will have darker at the bottom than at the top. So let's see what happens now. See if I got thick enough paint. I'm not sure I got thick enough even yet. I have a little cheap. Uh, paper towel thing over here that I've told you about before. I'll talk to you about it in a minute. Let me see what happens here. Let's make this Since this is the back of the lake, I want to make sure we have that bottom line fairly level. We can. Off in the distance. Okay. Um, let's come back and get a little more blue at the bottom. Darken it just a little. It's hard to tell. I'm putting darker blue on there, but I don't know if it's even showing up for you. Um, yeah, it could be. Uh, it could be showing up. It's uh, giving just a little darker base. 
the bottom of those trees. I'm not going to try to define those trees too much. They're, uh, they're basically just pretty far away. So let's do this and clean out that brush. So those are going to give some reflections too, right? <clears throat> so why don't we take just a little bit of that blue, see if we can do this, pull down. Got to get some paint on the brush to do this. <clears throat> I don't want this to be very, very lengthy shadows. I want it to kind of reflect what's above it. So that's all I'm trying to do, just pull down with the side of this brush and like that, and then how do we make the bottom of those soft edge? We get this other brush, bristle brush, clear water, clean water, clean brush. Take most of the water out of it and let's just go along here and lightly, lightly blend that into a soft edge. It's dry. If it's not dry, it's going to leave a blossom. Okay, that looks like a little reflection off in the distance. <clears throat> so we have a bank back there that's really not well defined, actually. Um, but if I go back in and put, try to put a bank in there now, it's going to give me possibly some runs. Although I'm going to use my flat brush one inch flat and get a little umber and uh, my uh, burnt sienna and see if I can put just a few dark bases on those trees in the background. I did put some dark blue in them on them but it didn't really show up that well. Let's see if we can put just a few things back here to straighten that edge out so we don't have this you don't want to show a lot of that background sky showing through but if it does you want it to have a flat base here to work from there so that kind of closes that in just a little so it doesn't look like we got that background sh uh, showing through here into the water it can show between the trees which looks very nice we left some spots in there for the uh, for this for it to show through All right, that's probably too much detail for the for distance. All right. Um, I'm trying to get look at my key. Okay, there we go. Um, all right, so that's that. So now we want to put some little islands in here with some trees in them. So. Pretty much the same technique, only I'm going to start using some of this brown <clears throat> and uh, get some dark base on it, get some uh, wood color with some Payne's Gray and we're going to put in a few little spots here that look like we got, we have some trees. I want to connect this in the background here. To the foreground. So I don't want this to line up perfectly under there. I want it to either go beyond it or stay well this side of it. All right, so I'm going to make this go just a little bit farther that way. Dark, dark at the bottom. Like that. Get our clean brush and soften a few edges in here. Make it blend with the water and then 
take our brush and pull down a few reflections out of this guy. Maybe a little darker than that, possibly. Pull a few. So we definitely got the sun coming at us, so we know we're making reflections back here that are representative of the sun back there coming toward us. So this is makes sense here. Little soft edges. Take the take this brush, take all the water out of it, all the paint out of it, and just tickle this edge along here so we have a soft edge there. All right. Now again I'm going to use the same idea of putting another clump of trees over this area and then your eye is going to go back to the sun back there. That sun was a little happy accident. I didn't plan to do that but it looks like it's just enough to uh, leave a little yellow spot back there in the background. I'll take it. Clean this brush out. <clears throat> All right. Um, what are we going to put over here? I'm going to put a really sort of a dark greenish color in here. Um, get some more brown. Make a little bit more of a bigger thing out of it over here. Something like that. It's really pretty simple with these brushes. You just don't have a whole lot of work to do. It's really kind of fun. All right, stop on that guy a little bit and let's see. I didn't show you what I was talking about when I, to get the water out of my brush, show you this blotter here that I have that's made out of a roll of toilet tissue with about five feet of paper towel wrapped around it. <clears throat> and it's really great for blotting the water out of the brush so that you don't have too much water. So I kind of always have it sitting up here above my palette. You never see it. But it's there, and if you see my hand go up there and do something like that, I'm tapping it to get some of the water out. So uh, that's what that's all about. It's, a, it's one of the another tip that I've learned from Sterling Edwards in his workshops that uh, is really, really nice to know. All right, I want to put some trees in around here. Um, and uh, I'm going to just put some craggy things here. I don't know what exactly I'm going to put in here, but I'm going to put a sort of something that maybe it's uh, broken and it's got a doesn't have much like that. Uh, may have a few things sticking off of it here and there. Uh, not too much. Let's put another little tree in here. I'm using this uh, number four uh, round and uh, so I'm kind of a d doing the uh, <clears throat> mama bear papa bear mama bear baby bear something like that these um, some of these cypress trees we have in Florida have a lot of different um, different kinds, actually. There's a lot more than I ever knew uh, that ever existed. Palm trees and cypress trees are really, uh, there's tons of different ones. All right, that's a nice little set of stuff here. This guy's dead. He's got nothing going on there. He's just kind of been hanging around out there in the swamp too long. Um, 
that these are truly cypress trees, they have a fat bottom on them. Uh, so I'm going to do more of that over here, but I wanted to kind of hint at that here. These uh, cypress trees have a lot of uh, a lot of branches, and they lose all of their needles. Many evergreen tripe trees don't lose their needles, but there are some that are very much like deciduous trees, and they lose their you know deciduous trees lose all their leaves in the uh, fall and winter. But um, almost all evergreens, except maybe two or three varieties, don't lose their, or do lose their leaves, lose their, their needles, their pine needles. And these cypress trees we have here are that kind. So we have this kind of a scraggly looking tree that's got uh, a bunch of branches sticking out. And uh, that's a cypress tree that's in full ready for the winter. So I'm making some shadows here under these trees so they actually fit with the landscape. It doesn't look like I glued them on. You've heard me talk about that before with other other trees, whether it's oil painting, watercolor. You don't want them to look glued on. All right. So there's that tree. So let's see if we can make a big, a bigger tree here that's closer to us. Um, I'm gonna go grab my number, uh, was it 12, 12 round, and pick up some of the similar same colors um, for this, but I'm gonna uh, make it bigger and fatter and uh, make it really look like a cypress tree because it's gonna have a a big fat base on it like this and uh, and get plenty of paint in this brush and just start going up like this Needs to be tapered out just a little more because they do look kind of like that. It's more dark over here. This is not uh, dark enough to suit me over there. Um, use your finger. We can use our brush here to tickle that bottom a little bit. So this tree here has got, uh, doesn't have any leaves on it yet, so I'm going to, or any needles even. Uh, I'm going to put another one here, like kind of right by it here, that's going to be very similar, but sort of a different angle. So we don't have two at the same angle, two at the same height. And the other thing that you see in Florida, a lot of these things called, when you have a cypress tree like this, you have these things that stick up. Um, they're called cypress knees. And they're like all over the place when you see this. A lot of water, these trees grow in water that uh, um, just generates, I, th I think these are connected to the root system somehow, or they're uh, trees that are growing that are going to become future cypress trees. All right, so there we go. Let's see if we can join those into the party here by softening the bottom. So I'm using this brush. This is a nylon brush, but it's got enough bristle in it that it, it scrapes and blends that much like much like that uh, one inch brush that I had. You can do it with any of these brushes. Okay, so how much for that? 
let's see here. Um, I think I'm going to try to put in some of these branches here. Maybe pick up a little of this yellow or orange. See if I can get them to sort of reflect some of the light that's coming in around them. You know, that's a neat little trick that people forget to use. But uh, so these have tons of I don't think you can see that very well. Using quite a bit of dry brush here, crisscrossing, making them uh, look like it's filled in. Uh, they have a making them a little wider as we go up here. I'm trying to see if I can. So taking this uh, and we'll do this one the same way, pulling up. I don't think I've ever tried to paint one of these cypress trees like this before. <clears throat> I'm just remembering what I see when I take a walk in our neighborhood park over here, what these things look like in the wintertime. And uh, they have this real airy look about them. And uh, all, their, all their needles are gone. We have places at the top where the birds just sit, certain birds set up there and warm themselves in the sun. And they just drop all kind of pine needles all over the place when you're, uh, when they're closer to land. So I'm letting these crisscross and make all kinds of things that uh, Probably come out a little further. This is a bigger tree. So let's make his branches come out a little more further. All right, so that's kind of the way <clears throat> some of these cypress trees look around here in the wintertime, and that's what you would see in a sort of a sunset. You'd see that sort of uh, interesting. Um, see-through quality of them. <clears throat> Make a few more up here like this. All right. So, what else we got to do? We got to put some more, some more reflections down here. I don't know if that's quite enough reflections there or not. Um, but, I think we're gonna, I'm gonna take some water. I'm just gonna clear water. I'm just gonna lightly glaze this with clear water. And I'm gonna do the same up here. Just a little water. And then use this color that I have, this uh, brownish, yucky looking color. Maybe add a little more water to it, maybe. If I add too much water, I'm going to get a big old blossom down there, and I don't want a big old blossom. Um, 
So let's see what I can do with this here. That greenish color, greenish and brownish color. Add some. So let's see if we can just pull these down like this. Like that. Let's go back and get this guy again. Let's put a little more definition in him. And then we want to pull these down like we're having some reflections coming out of those. This was almost too wet to try to uh, make a reflection of that tree, but I'm going to try to put something in there that looks like it. Over here, the same thing. Um, just a slight set of darks that come down. Okay. I'm going to just about stop on this one. I think I'm uh, getting to the point where I don't want to mess it up anymore. Maybe this should be just slightly blurred. Take a few of these and pull them sideways like that. Helps give that It looks like. Uh, and let's go put a few. I think I'm going to use orange, maybe. Use some of this orange. And put a get a rust color and put some put some little things on here that kind of look like there may be still some uh, um, not leaves, but uh, pine needles kind of still setting around, hasn't all fallen off yet. Uh, put some pine needles on the little bank around the bottom of these. They have sort of a reddish greenish color and kind of a dirty color. So I'm just going to spot some of that in here in some places and uh, just rough that up so it doesn't look like it's just a smooth piece of ground because it's not. Uh, it's got rocks in it and all kind of stuff going on here. Okay, what else can I do? I'm going to splatter it, right? I want to splatter it. Oh, birds, birds, birds. Lindy, you're the... I don't know what I'd do without you reminding me about those birds. I just forget them every night. They, actually, these things have all kind of birds, and this, this is a bird sanctuary. Most of the places around here that have, uh, have these... Uh, Swampy areas, birds. They got alligators. They got uh, tons of different kinds of uh, wildlife in these places. So, where would the birds be? Well, they'd probably be close to this tree up here, maybe like that. And some of them have longer necks on them too. These herons. Um, but if you like that. Might even have one or two sitting on the bank down here somewhere. <laughs> Can't tell that from a weed. I won't mess with it. I'll mess it up. Okay, I think I'm going to sign it. Oh, I didn't splatter it. I got distracted with my birds. So let's put a little splatter on here. <coughs> And see if we can make it just a little better. See, that's too wet. I don't know if you could see that, but when I hit that with water, it just sort of blurred out. It didn't really stick. So let's put a few more spots in here, maybe. There's some spots that are sticking. It's the same idea though, if the paint is really thick, and it's hard to splatter with thick paint because you need to have the water to, uh, you need to have the water to make it loose enough to splatter. And then uh, if you got too much water, then it makes little blossoms in here. So, just further away, okay. Uh, this tree needs to have a little more dark in it, maybe over here. Same with this guy. 
All right, I've got some shit reflections. I got some nice pine trees. The only thing I don't have is a signature on here. So let's <clears throat> see if we can put a signature on here that's not too intrusive. Right in here. Okay, folks, there's two paintings that, uh, whoops, hopefully you can give those a try. We got the cypress water scene here, a sunset scene, very much like what I might see when I take a walk around our, our local park. And you got a winter scene that uh, is kind of representative of a lot of places in, the, in America today. <clears throat> so let's zoom back and... Uh, say thank you folks for joining i'm really glad to have you here i uh, hope you like this hope you give these a try try these big brushes if you don't have this this big brush set um, get yourself some uh you know you've got you can get these oil painting brushes you can do almost the same thing with this oil painting brush it's just not as wide and square but you could get a a flat oil painting brush and you can do the same type of softening of these edges uh, that we do with this this set of brushes so if you've got an oil painting brush don't be afraid to use it. Um, it's, uh, it's actually how one of the famous oil painters ended up painting with bristle brushes. He went to a friend's house and he didn't have his oil paints and he said, well, try these bristle brushes. And uh, the artist's name was Zoltan Zabo. And uh, he started that. I think he's one of the first ones to really try to use bristle brushes for uh, watercolors. So it's kind of fun to try it and see how the different techniques work. Uh, certainly different than a traditional uh, watercolor. And uh, so anyway, uh, I want you to uh, like this if you would and share it with your friends if you like my work. Um, check out my website, check out my uh, Facebook page and my Patreon site. And uh, these, uh, this video will be re-edited and put up on Facebook and on um, Facebook and uh, YouTube in probably uh, a couple, three days. Well, we got Thanksgiving tomorrow here, so uh, it'll probably be an extra day or so. But anyway, this, this will be out there and you can give it a try. Um, I won't put anything on my website other than the finished photo, so uh, I don't have a, a sketch for you to work from, so you'll have to make your own sketch from these. Um, but I think you can do that, and uh, hope you have fun giving this a try. Let me know how you do. I'd love to see your comments on Facebook, on um, Facebook, on YouTube. <laughs> I got Facebook on the mind for some reason. Okay, um, that's all I want to say, so uh, thanks for being here today, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.